Next I'd like to show off the camera lens blur effect which has also been enhanced in After Effects CS 5.5. This is a good add-on to the prior movie about the camera's depth of field blur as well. If you happen to have the disk of sources that came with Creating Motion Graphics 5th edition, go to the sources folder, twirl open movies, go down to AB for art beats, star fields, import that, then drag it to the new comp icon. This has a lot of white or bright points of light in the 2D layer, which makes it a great candidate to go ahead and treat with some specialized blur. With this layer selected, I'll go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Camera Lens Blur. There was indeed a lens blur in prior versions of After Effects. It's now considered an obsolete effect. If you have a project that used it, it will still open and still use an old version of this effect, but from now on, you'll be applying the enhanced camera lens blur effect. As soon as I do so, you'll see my footage gets kind of interesting and blurred out. I'm going to increase the blur radius so you can really see the pattern of blurs caused by this effect. And now you see that really nice, real camera-like hexagon iris shape. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the edge pixels for now just to clean up the edges. Now that I can see these nice blurred out shapes, let's start playing around with some of the iris parameters. For example, I have different shapes. Triangle, becomes very apparent what's going on now. Square, pentagon, the hexagon we played with on all these shapes up to the 10-sided decagon, which is a very complex shape. I'm gonna go back to square for now, not because you would necessarily use it, <laughs> but because it shows off the other parameters very clearly. Initially, you have sort of a diamond orientation to this iris. You do have the ability to round off any of these, and at the extreme, you get circular irises, or in lower settings, just slightly softened versions of the iris. I'll go back down to zero. You can rotate them. Right now, it's in a diamond orientation, but if I was to go 45 degrees, you now have this square orientation, which is kind of a special effect as opposed to a realistic effect. I'll go back to zero. Aspect ratio comes in handy if you're trying to match the look of footage shot through an anamorphic lens. If the lens happens to have, say, a two to one squeeze, well, your highlights that are gonna get blurred are also squeezed. If you wanna match that, you can go down to 0.5, which mimics footage being squeezed down on the horizontal plane, or go to other extreme numbers like five to create very special effects like that. But let's go back to one for now. There's also diffraction fringe. Whether or not the iris blur shape has this very constant fill, or whether or not you start to push that brightness out to the edges. In other words, get a nice fringe around this look. This can be a special effect when applied to something like a square, but applied to a more common shape like a hexagon, you start getting a really nice, classic, real camera blur sort of look with that bright rim around the edge. Camera Lens Blur has the same highlight parameters that we saw for the 3D camera in the prior movie, including gain, threshold, and saturation. Fortunately, the threshold defaults to a far more sensible 204, 20% down off the of max, as opposed to the maximum value that the 3D camera defaults to. I can go ahead and crank this up if I want to. Since these are not colored, it's not as interesting as the planets, but you get an idea of what you can do with this. And one other reason that we really like the old lens blur effect and still like the camera lens blur effect is the blur map. What blur map does is take another layer in your composition, looks typically at its luminance values, and uses that as a map to determine how much each pixel of this image gets blurred. Particularly if you have a depth of field map rendered from a 3D program, you can use that as your blur map here and then recreate depth of field effects in After Effects instead of having to render it in your 3D program. So that's another nice area of enhancement for both the visual effects and the motion graphics artists in After Effects CS 5.5. This nice depth of field effect either for 3D cameras or as a 2D effect applied to other layers.